Sri Siddha Rameshwar Maharaj, was born in 1888 in India, in a small village, called Pathri, west of Sholapur, south of Mumbai. The boy, was named Siddha Ramapa, in respect to Sri Siddheshwar. When he was 10 years old, Sri Revan Siddheshwar appeared in his dream, and gave in his hand, a prashad, which is a food offering. When he was at school, during breaks, he used to escape to the temple of Sri Sideshwar, and simply stay there, contemplating. When he became 18 years old, he was living in Sholapur, and a few years later, he moved with his family to the city of Bijapur, where he bought a house and was working as an account. Sita Ramapa's spiritual life, started very soon, when a friend invited him to listen to a guru, visiting the city, named Sri Bal Sahib Maharaj, which was renowned all over the region. After the visit, he immediately became a disciple, and started attending the gatherings and meditations. One day, working in a distant city, after seven years of meditation and being a devoted disciple of Sri Bal Sahib, he saw a vision of his guru going away in a chariot. On the next day, he received a telegram, stating that his guru had left his body. After that, Sri Siddha Rameshwar, started neglecting his worldly life. He turned more and more towards spiritual path. When he was only 28 years old, he put an end to his worldly life, renouncing material comforts, and leading a life, of strict self-discipline, as an act of devotion. He then went to a nearby village, where he could meditate, with no interruption. He started doing severe penance, neglecting his body, physical appearance, his health and well-being. While doing his meditation, only once, in 24 hours he used to have milk, a piece of bread and rice. He would leave the seat of meditation, only for having bath and food. Sri Maharaja's penance, was becoming more and more intense, For the whole day, he would sit in a room to meditate, for around 18 to 20 hours without a break. He would repeat always, either I reach the final reality or die doing it. After two years of penance and unbroken meditation, his guru, Sri Bal Sahib, appeared to him in a dream, and said, There is nothing left for you to do. Give salvation to humanity by guiding them on the spiritual path. At that time, he had crossed all the limits of worldly life, and now he had become universal. Then, Sri Maharaj, started imparting knowledge and devotion. About meditation, he would say, you should meditate without any concept. Nothing is to be brought to the mind. Nothing to be know, to be seen or experimented there. Because we are God, we become split as soon as we imagine something. His state of grace was such, at that time, that he was in constant, absolute superconsciousness, and as soon as he closed his eyes, he would be absorbed in total samadhi, But on the other hand, 
his health had deteriorated so much, that people started wondering, whether he would survive or not. His father, and other members of his family, had to take care of him. His body, came down to literally, skin and bone. After five months, at his father's home, he was feeling a little better. He then started his spiritual work again, moving from village to village, giving lectures, on knowledge and devotion. When people asked him, for a special mantra, he would always say, Repeat this all the time, morning, afternoon and night. I am Brahman. Only Brahman exists. Brahman is everything. Sri Maharaja's strength, of awakening people, and his skill in oratory was so great and absolute, that the listeners would be totally charmed. Many people, would accept his teaching, and finally surrender to the Guru. He used to say, to his disciples, Trust me I tell you, you are divine. Take it as the absolute truth. Your joy is divine, your suffering, is divine too. All comes from God, Brahman. Remember it always. You are Brahman, and your will alone is done. Sri Maharaj was of medium height, light complexion, with a very strong athletic built, and a luminous face. In 1920, Maharaj started his spiritual work in Mumbai. During his talkings, about 200 people would gather every day, and would celebrate, by doing meditation, by Johns and listening to lectures. With the divine name, he used to bring about vision of God, and with his lectures, he used to bring about vision of the self. He would repeat to the people, Do not follow other religion than that of your inner self. To remain in your own self is the true religion. Those who worship other gods, let them do so. Whenever a disciple would complain about anything, he would firmly say, Wherever God has put you, leave there happily. He created, his own way of approaching reality, called, the bird's way, the direct path to self-discovery. In 1925, he wrote a book, about scientific discoveries where he foresaw the problems with the flood of electronic gadgets, like smartphones, computers and television, that would invade our lives in the future. He said, The modern technology with innovations every day make up a cyclone of, great illusion, that could make you a slave. Who knows to where the one who is caught by this great cyclone will be carried off. He was always traveling, by foot or by train, visiting holy places, cities and villages, teaching and giving lectures to people. Even dealing with poor health and a bad case of untreated diabetes, he would still be giving knowledge, with great vigor to more and more disciples. He would talk with absolute clarity, with a distinct style of giving simple, clear, and direct instructions. He would say to the listeners, Never harm anyone or blame anyone. No matter what they did to you. All will reap the fruit of their actions. One who harms others, suffers harm himself. Sri Siddha Rameshwar Maharaja's spiritual instructions were on non-dual Advaita, meaning that your inner self is not different from Brahman, the Absolute. In November 1936, after more than 20 years, preaching and teaching, he arrived in Mumbai one last time. His illness, had worsened completely. His diabetes, was out of control. And his health, was sinking day by day. When people came to know, that Sri Maharaj was staying at a disciple's house, and being very sick, they started pouring in, to pay respect and for his darshan. By November 9th, in the morning, his condition had completely worsened. 
He was refusing to take any kind of food, because he would feel extreme pain when eating. With a growing crowd of followers, of all social classes and different religions, outside the house, and only a few disciples inside his room, at around 8.45 p.m., he closed his eyes, and merged in the Parabrahman, the final reality. He was only 48 years old. On seeing, that Sri Maharaj had left his body, his disciples carried his mortal body, and the final procession started, with people of all walks of life following, and chanting. Around 400 to 500 followers, were walking in the procession, till they reached the crematorium. There, according to tradition, they lighted a pyre under Sri Maharaja's mortal body. Today, Sri Sita Rameshwar Maharaja's ashes, are deposited in a shrine, in Banganga, Wakeshwar, in Mumbai. His legacy is still alive. Many of his direct disciples, and disciples of his disciples, are said to have also reached final reality, such as Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj, Sri Ranjit Maharaj, Sri Mupankad Sideshwar, Sri Gana Patraho Maharaj, Sri Ramakant Maharaj, Sri Vilazanand Maharaj, Sri Ranachodre Maharaj, and many others. Sri Maharaj, was a guru, of the lineage of the Nine Masters tradition. His teachings, continue very much alive and you can find his message in the books. Master Key to Self-Realization The Spiritual Science of Self-Knowledge Amrut Laya The Stateless State Master of Self-Realization An Ultimate Understanding Golden Day The Perfection of Material Science Master of Self Without Self A Biography, with quotes from the Guru